Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. We will be starting um, right now. Welcome to the webinar on the United Nations Initiative on Sustainable Procurement in the Health Sector. Can you, um, Mirjana, can you confirm you can hear me well? Yes, I can hear you very well, Irina. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Irina Uzun, and I work for the United Nations Environment Program um, Division of Technology, Industry and Economics Office in Paris. Um, I will introduce a little later um, Mr. Farid Yaker, who is the Program Officer of the Sustainable Public Procurement Program here at UNEP. But before we start, I would like to uh, give you a brief introduction to the GoToWebinar tool if you have never used it before. So, as you noticed, all the attendees are on listen-only mode. It will stay like this during the whole course of the presentation. However, if you have a question or a comment, you are welcome to raise your hand and you have a special button on the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, or you can also write down your question in the chat box, in the questions box, and we will uh, get to your question in due time and we'll read it out loud and we'll respond to it. So the webinar will last for an hour. We will have a questions and answers session at the end. And I would like to inform you that this webinar will be recorded and we will make the recording available on the 10 PSPP program library of webinars on SPP hosted through the SCP Clearinghouse YouTube channel. I thank you for your attention and without further delay, I would like to hand over the floor to Mr. Yaker for some welcoming remarks and a presentation on the SPP program. Thank you, Irina. So I'm Farid Yaker, SPP program officer in UNEP. First of all, I would like to say that I'm really happy and pleased to be part of this webinar. We're really glad to be able to co-organize this webinar with our colleagues from UNDP. I think it's uh, the first time we have this kind of activity on an important topic. I think health is an important sector and we look forward to uh, uh, working and, and, and making prog progress on the sustainability of the health, the health sector. Uh, so first of all, I would like to present maybe and the, uh, the agenda of the webinar. So I will present you the concept of sustainable public procurement and the 10 YFP SPP program. Then we will have presentations from Dr. Christoph Hamelman, who is the regional team leader uh, and senior advisor for Arab states, right? And uh, we will have then Miss Mirjana Milik, Milic, sorry, I don't know how you pronounce your last name, Mirjana, but I think it's not far from the, the way it should be pronounced. Uh, who is the SPHS Associate Coordinator. Then we will have a presentation by Mr. Volker Felter Welter on the UNDP's Procurement Strategy and Sustainability, and a presentation from Mr. Martin Sorensen, who is, the topic will be UNFPA's Eco Condoms, and then we will be closing with a, a discussion. Next one. Next. So first of all, first of all, I would like to maybe introduce the topic of SPP. What do we mean by SPP? So there you have uh, the, the definition we have approved in the program, which dates back from the uh, UK Task Force on Sustainable Public Procurement. And uh, what you have to uh, keep from this definition is that SPP, Sustainable Public Procurement, is a uh, type of public procurement is in, should be done in accordance with the principles of public procurement. Uh, the only differences we introduced compared to public procurement uh, activities or practices is that it should be achieved in a way that uh, is in accordance with whole life cycle basis and we should be achieving value for money in, 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 in a way that generates benefits not only to the organization, that's very important, but also to society as a whole. And sustainable public procurement should target and should aim at reducing negative impacts on the environment and also positive impacts on, on the economy. So the two important uh, aspects that uh, make it uh, peculiar is the fact that we should be done in accordance with the whole life cycle uh, or life cycle analysis 
and also that the benefits should accrue not only to the organization but also to society as a whole. And that's quite important in the, ca in the, in the, in the case of health sector, but we have, because we have so many uh, externalities, uh, negative environmental impacts or health impacts that are uh, sometimes achieved through purchasing of the, uh, the wrong items, either in terms of medication or uh, medical equipment or in the, when we uh, manufacture certain items that are purchased in the health sector, then we can have, we can have also negative impact either on the environment or, or, or on health that we should account and take into uh, consideration in the procurement process. When we say take into account the life cycle analysis, one central concept is the concept of total cost of ownership. Here on the graphic you can see the comparison between two products, a green product and a standard product. Usually, if we purchase the good by using only the acquisition price, then we will tend to purchase the conventional product in grey. If we factor in other aspects like uh, the use cost and the waste cost, then you find out that the green product can be less expensive in the end than uh, the grey product. So it's important to take into account sequent phases, use phase, waste phases, i.e. the total cost of ownership of the good to have a clear view of uh, the global costs that are going to be incurred by the organization. And in this case, very often green products or sustainable products can be cheaper and then can be really encouraged for them. I mentioned also the, the centrality of the concept of uh, value for money. So in, in sustainable public procurement, we want to increase the value for money, but the way we define value is a bit different from conventional procurement because the value uh, should incur or should, sorry, uh, factor in negative externalities, for example, CO2 emissions, uh, impacts on health, for example, that we should take into account when we do uh, the purchasing, or also positive externalities, increased know-how, uh, the uh, transfer of technologies and all that uh, over uh, during the, the the period of possession of the good. And so we should really uh, take into account all those negative externalities or, or externalities when we calculate the value, but we should also make sure that uh, what we pay for the goods also is, is minimized in the case of uh, green goods. So uh, we should make sure that, the, the, for example, we, we introduce uh, the purchasing of, or we uh, purchase high volumes of certain green goods, or we uh, get the assistance of uh, other instruments, or that we phase out uh, subsidies for conventional items that tend to uh, give a positive bias to uh, conventional items. So it's really important if we want to encourage sustainable public procurement, one, that we take into account the real value of the good to society, not only to the organization, i.e. the impact not only for the organization but to society as a whole, and in the case, again, of uh, health products, uh, it's quite important because we know that uh, there are uh, costs to society, for example, in financing the health system, uh, which is due to uh, the use of, uh, for example, uh, if the, the air quality is bad, if we purchase set, uh, certain types of uh, vehicles that are uh, high emitters of uh, gases or uh, pollution, pollution, hazardous substances, etc., then we have an impact on, on health that is going to be paid by society. So in the end, it's, it's a real impact that we have to take into account. So let's take the, the real value of uh, the, the goods that are going to be purchased and let's make sure that what we pay for those goods is uh, minimized and, and corresponds to, to the reality, i.e. that uh, we uh, make sure that it's not biased uh, in favor of the conventional items who would, for example, benefit from subsidies as in the case of fossil fuels, for example. Next one. So UNEP is uh, leading the international Sustainable Public Procurement Program, which is part of what we call the 10-year framework of program on sustainable consumption and production. 
So this 10 YFP was adopted at the Rio Plus 20 conference. It's one of the main outcomes of the Rio Plus 20 conference. It's a global framework of action to enhance international cooperation. The idea is to accelerate the shift towards SCP patterns in both developed and developing countries. And it has six main programs and the sustainable public procurement was the first one to be launched. It was the first one because it was building on previous experiences. First of all, we had an initiative by, Swiss, by Switzerland who was leading a task force as part of what we call the Marrakesh Task Force. Then we had, in a 3 of plus 20, we launched what we call the SPP initiative, which was already an international platform and, and collaborative platform to accelerate the shift to SPP. And finally, on 1st April 2014, after we obtained our application, the application of the SPPI uh, was successful. The, the program was launched finally in New York. So what are the objectives? Uh, the main objective, objective is really to build an international SPP community. And, this, uh, and, and, and what we do together as, as a community is really we try to build a case for SPP, improve the knowledge on sustainable public procurement and ensure that it can be an effective tool to promote greener economies and sustainable development. We also support the implementation of SPP on the ground by increased collaboration, by giving access to tools and providing technical assistance to implementing organizations. And we work on cooperation and exchange between members through the creation of dedicated working groups. So far, the program has 85 partners, we call members partners, and that are distributed all over the world. So as you can see here on the map, uh, we have a, a very fair balanced distribution between the, uh, all the continents and between also the types of stakeholders. And all the, as I said, all these partners are really uh, working together towards implementing a, an, an action plan, a work plan that is being uh, approved by our multi-stakeholder advisory committee. We have biennial work plans. The next one will come into effect in 2016 for uh, until 2017. Um, it looks pretty much like the, the previous one. As you can see, we have four main work areas. The, the priority for us is really the implementation of SPP on the ground, but we have also the, uh, the, 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 the interest and interest in assessing implementation and uh, the impact of SPP. So we work uh, on developing a framework for monitoring SPP, which will be connected to the SDGs, because one of the 169 targets of the SDGs concerns sustainable public procurement, target 12.7. So we will have to develop indicators for sustainable public procurement. We work also on the measurement of impact. You can see we have also a work area which is dedicated to identifying the obstacles and promoting innovative solutions. So uh, in this framework, we try to see how we can give a, a, a better share of sustainable public procurement to SMEs, for example. And we have an area of collaboration with the private sector. And here there will be some work you see in uh, the ones that are in white are not yet active. They don't have yet leads and, and concept notes that were approved. So you can see that group 4D is about developing purchasing guidance for priority sectors. And we hope that uh, we will be collaborating uh, with our colleagues from UNDP and with the initiative in the framework of this group, uh, targeting maybe the health sector and uh, maybe working together towards developing those purchasing guidance for procurers. The previous work plan, as I said, uh, lasted two years, and we have some of the outputs here that are on the screen. You can see that we have developed SPP principles. We have developed uh, studies with recommendations on how we can measure the benefits of SPP, how we can monitor SPP implementation. We produce also a global review every three years on the state of implementation of SPP and GPP. The next one will be out in 2016. We did also a pre-study on the sustainability of supply chains with the help of our colleagues from uh, SEMCO in, in Sweden. Next one. So 
I hope I, I gave you a good overview of the program. So uh, I hope that many of you now uh, are interested to, to join. We need to have uh, more participation, more interest uh, in, in the program and, and, and increase the number of partners. So please join the 10 YFP program. I, I provide you here the link to the website. And if you need more information, please don't hesitate to come back to us. And I look forward to participating in the discussion later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for you. Mirjana? Yes. So the floor. Um, thank you. For, mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, first, I would like to thank you both Farid and Irina for an introduction and, of course, an opportunity to present the United Nations Initiative on Sustainable Procurement in the Health Sector, which we shortly uh, call the SPHS Initiative. My name is Nirana Milic and I work as the SPHS uh, Associate Coordinator. And I would like to express apologies on behalf of Christoph Hamelman as he could not attend the webinar today due to other urgent commitments. Nevertheless, we both uh, stand at your disposal for any questions you may have and you can contact us via email or through our website. Can you please go to the next slide? I would like to begin with a brief introduction on our initiative, answering the questions who we are. Viriana, we can't hear you anymore. Hello? Yes. We lost you for a moment. Sure. So, let me repeat again. With an arising interest of the UN agencies uh, who procure health commodities and services in the global health aid market, the SPHS was officially established in May 2012 in Copenhagen, Denmark. Since 2015, uh, the SPHS is hosted by the UNDP Istanbul Regional Hub, and we bring together 10 members, seven UN agencies, and three multilateral health financing institutions. And on this slide, you can see who are our members currently. Important feature of our initiative is that the SPHS task team has cumulative purchasing power in the global health aid market, around uh, 5 billion US dollars annually. And we aim to leverage this purchasing power too. Next slide. We aim to facilitate and coordinate the introduction of green procurement in the health sector among our members and in addition to leverage the normative mandate and joint procurement volumes of our member agencies with an aim to influence the global health aid market and beyond towards greener health systems and green economies. Next slide. The vision of our initiative is to reduce the environmental burden by the health sector. The desire impact is that the health sector procurement policies and practices promote and protect health and do not adversely impact on the environment or on human health and well-being. And to achieve this vision and impact, the SPHS has four main objectives. Uh, we aim to use uh, procurement as a leverage to advance environmental health agenda, to establish evidence-based standards, to capacitate UN procurement officers and suppliers and other health actors, and to increase awareness of the key stakeholders from the global health aid market. Next slide, please. Regarding the outcome, as it is indicated that our specific goals are to adopt and implement environmentally sound procurement policies and practices in the health sector, the SPHS focuses on three environmental dimensions which are greenhouse gas emissions, resource depletion, and finally chemical pollution. Please note that our task team members work as well on social dimensions of sustainability. However, our current joint focus is mainly on the environmental sustainability. Next slide. With the newly adopted Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the SPHS initiative represents a great example of financing and implementing the SDGs by gathering the public and private sector connected to sustainable health procurement. Uh, the SPHS initiative is in particular linked to five SDG goals, which are, as you can see on this, this slide, goal three, to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Goal six, to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Goal 12, to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Goal 13, to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. 
and Goal 17 to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development. Overall, uh, we are aligned with these SDGs that I mentioned, and the SPHS aims to enhance basically the global partnership for sustainable development by promoting public procurement practices that are sustainable. And in addition to this, I would like to uh, mention that the SPHS initiative is also aligned with the principles which were established by the United Nations Supplier Code of Conduct. Next slide. So the question is how do we get there in practical terms? As I have mentioned earlier, public procurement has been identified as a key entry point for promoting more sustainable production and consumption part patterns. In order to achieve this, in 2014, with the support of the UNDP Innovation Facility and the Danish government, we have developed a roadmap for the development of the Green Procurement Index, Health. One of the most essential parts uh, to successfully implement green procurement criteria into UN system procurement practices, as you can see in the center of this roadmap, is the engagement with suppliers and manufacturers. For this reason, our task team has been particularly focusing on its engagement and collaboration with suppliers and manufacturers with an aim to introduce green procurement. The aim for 2015 is to establish green procurement criteria with immediate applicability to the procurement practices within the UN system, but uh, we are also developing an online engagement platform which will serve as a knowledge hub on green procurement practices and also as a meeting point for decision makers, policy makers, procurement practitioners, academia, suppliers and manufacturers and all the other interested institutions and individuals to share best practices and lessons learned. And in order to have regular updates in case you will be interested on this project, you can also follow us on Twitter at Green Proc Index. Next slide, please. Regarding the other achievements and outreach, another example of the projects uh, which the SPHS members intend to engage with suppliers and manufacturers on greening health products and services is undertaken by UNDP and UNFPA in collaboration with Healthcare Without Harm. Uh, we are being financially supported by the SCOL and United Nations Foundations to develop tools to guide procurement of safer alternatives to hazardous chemical products with an aim to protect healthcare workers, patients, communities and the environment. Also, it is important to mention that um, SBHS and also all our members participate in many international venues to establish partnership and to raise the visibility of their work and they engage with policymakers, public procurers, suppliers and manufacturers. And just to name a few here, we have put for you um, which uh, events we have recently attended or we will attend. Uh, to just name a few, we have attended WHO Global Health and Climate Conference in August last year, Global Green Growth Forum. Recently, we were also participating in International Solid Waste Association Congress in Belgium, um, as well as the European Commission Joint Research Center Seminar on Global Sustainable Development in the pharmaceutical and healthcare sector, and it was held in September. And beyond that, we will also attend the International Pharmaceutical Federation Congress of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, which takes place uh, this week in uh, Düsseldorf in Germany, uh, as well as uh, we will attend and organize certain capacity development sessions at the UN Global Supplier Meeting in Copenhagen in November this year and uh, participate again in the Global Green Growth Forum taking place next year in Copenhagen. So these are just some of the venues which uh, we use to establish partnerships and promote sustainable procurement in the health sector. Lastly, one of the key strengths of the initiative, which I would mention, is its vast global network of internationally renowned institutions and experts uh, who are specialized in many diversified fields related to public health, environment, development, sustainability, and similar. We bring together around 3,500 individuals and organizations who are interested in sustainable procurement in the health sector and who are present in 92 countries around the world. Next slide. To just give you an example of, uh, from some of our members, I would like to mention the work which the UNDP has been undertaking to measure the compliance of its healthcare procurement with international conventions, which consider the whole life cycle of the products, taking into consideration aspects ranging from the production to the disposal, 
This evaluation and monitoring activity is still in the development phase, but it is well advanced. And here on this slide, you can see five international that will be considered for the exercise. Next slide. For those who might be interested in our work in details, you can access our updated engagement platform and new slashes on the links that you can see in this presentation. The structure of the online platform addresses a number of our objectives and will meet the needs of our members and all the external stakeholders, including other UN um, and multilateral agencies, suppliers and manufacturers, public sector procurers, NGOs, think tanks, and other members of the public which will present a great potential to tap the collective knowledge and experiences of the health sector and beyond to share information, exchange lessons learned, and get involved in diverse projects. The SPHS uh, new slash system also facilitates communication between our members and our external network, stakeholders, and all the other interested parties. In case you would like to subscribe to receive our news flash, please, you can also follow the link that is provided. Next slide. Last but not least, before finalizing our presentation, I would like to restate that our initiative aims to act as a driver for transformational change towards greener health systems and inclusive green economies in order to achieve sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And as it is written here, our aim is not only to save lives, but to do it in a sustainable manner. Next slide. Again, I would like to refer you to our website, ittsphs.org, for more information on our work and the ongoing and future projects. You can also follow us on Twitter and receive regular updates on the initiative by scanning the QR code from this slide. Now I would like to hand over to Mr. Mark Lundvall from UNDP, who will deliver a presentation on their procurement strategy and sustainability aspects. And last but not least, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and look forward to receiving your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, my name is Mark Lundwall. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me all right. Uh, Mr. Volker Welter, Chief of Procurement Service Unit here at UNDP in New York. He could not, unfortunately, make it today, so I'm um, uh, presenting the uh, new procurement strategy uh, and sustainability and how it relates a little bit to the health sector um, and what kind of work we're doing here at UNDP uh, on his behalf. I also want to thank the organizers uh, for letting us have the chance uh, to present uh, our new strategy and the sort of relationships to the health sector. And thanks, Mirjana, for handing over. Okay, please, next slide. So, what do we mean by the procurement strategy for the next two years? Uh, essentially, it's uh, a pretty new product that came out a couple months ago. It's uh, a corporately endorsed document that we uh, have worked on feverishly to uh, accomplish and to finalize. And um, the key feature here is that we are aiming to, to, to get corporate endorsement for procurement as a strategic function in the organization. Um, and it's a supportive of our strategic plan for the uh, period of 2014 to 2017. And uh, furthermore, like the sort of key features of the strategy are that it includes commitments to, for instance, clean supply chains, like monitoring what's going on, uh, purchasing inno innovations, and uh, also integration of the procurement function into the uh, uh, programming function, and uh, build on stronger partnerships, um, public, private, wherever we can find sort of synergy effects, and also enhance the transparency in and integrity as well as accountability, which are, of course, key pillars of uh, any public procurement. Uh, so something that will be super important to analyze the strategy and how we're fulfilling it is, of course, to uh, measure the impacts. And then um, 
also we will be assessing and building capacity within the procurement function. Next slide, please. And uh, think the sort of overarching uh, feature of the procurement strategy or the UNDP procurement strategy is that it's green and it takes care of of the environment in uh, in in all uh, uh, areas possible. And essentially, what we mean by it being green is that we're going to be implementing mandatory evaluation criteria and social cost of carbon when we're actually doing purchases and and to us that is a, a, to make these mandatory features of the procurement process will be sort of key in order to progress the environmental agenda or the sustainability agenda and um, w when we're talking about this we we want to move away from the maybe traditional way of thinking about procurement where there's a focus on price as the main denominator whether whether to go ahead with a contract award or not but rather we want to move away from this way of thinking and like Farid said a best value for money principle as well as sort of b building on the concepts of total cost of ownership and life cycle cost and uh, the, this will be key. Um, yeah, I think we can move to the next slide. Thank you. And um, so I talked a little bit, I quickly mentioned clean supply chains and um, any kind of supply chain that we're engaged in considering our varied portfolio in UNDP um, is uh, First of all, it's very complex, um, and it includes many, many different players. It can be subcontractors, wholesalers, manufacturers, and it can be various geographical locations, regions, and, and countries, and so on. So, to paint a, a, a short, a long story short, uh, it's a super complex structure that we're working in, but. At the same time, we need to ensure that our doorstep is, is clean, as well as our back doors, of course, depending on how you see it. And, um, and therefore, our strategy includes uh, some key commitments to ensuring that our supply chain is, is clean throughout. And um, it's, of course, an enormous task, in, but we, we, are go we have endorsement for this, and we're going to do... Um, uh, we're going to develop tools and monitoring mechanisms, and uh, it's going to be done most likely via s sort of supplier audits or or spot checks and assessments, and it's all going to be uh, based upon sort of working together with with our suppliers uh, as partners and and promoting sustainability rather than a a top down approach. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, um, a big focus of this strategy will be uh, renewable energies. That's a big talking point uh, and discussion topic in UNDP these days. And um, a, a key in order to move ahead with that is uh, solar technology or solar appliances or solar energy, call it what you want. Um, and uh, some of the things we already done, and we we expect to, uh, or we aim to enhance these uh, and progress these uh, projects all already underway. But one of the main things that we've done is uh, that we pre-positioned solar appliances in uh, strategic hubs or strategic uh, humanitarian response depots around the world, and for quick deployment of these when, for instance, a crisis strikes. We have here a good example where we uh, where we uh, supplied solar panels to uh, our country offices in the, in the Ebola affected regions, and they were thereby uh, able to offset their their energy use to the hospitals in in the regions, who are of course the should be the most prioritized uh, institutions in in such a situation. Um, and um, another sort of fact that uh, 
um, it is clear is that uh, in the Nepal earthquake, actually the only working electrical infrastructure, or community infrastructure, was um, solar streetlights. Um, so, and to kind of showcase the 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 strong um, the strong argument for these kind of appliances. Okay, thank you. Next slide. And um, we have already today a lot of LTAs, which are available to via our LTA repository, available for interagency use and piggybacking by other uh, by other UN agencies. We have uh, in in our product portfolio concerning solar, we have things like so solar power radios, phone chargers, and lanterns. Um, and then we have uh, even small off-grid solar home power systems that you can place on the roof um, of a of a structure of a house. Um, we have some headlamps and then power packs that are portable. These are all available for uh, more or less immediate shipping as far as... Uh, okay, thank you. Next slide. Then a, another key feature of, of the strategy is, of course, to we cannot expect to accomplish anything by, us, by ourselves. So uh, we are aiming to work and enhance the work that has been done as delivering as one. And um, we, we aim to uh, partake in any discussions that are, are uh, progressing this sustainability agenda and, and the um, a, UNDP procurement strategy. Things like the best practice examples, greening the blue from the, um, the uh, Secretary General's uh, initiative are, are really showcase pieces where, where uh, really uh, procure, uh, the, UN, the power of the UN and working together can be, be leveraged. And um, we, we will ensure to of course, talk with our peers in the UN system on, and and have a a discussion on the social cost of carbon and the possible implementation of that in in our uh, purchasing decisions, and and also to get it peer review, uh, reviewed sort of and how to we can apply it to our specific contexts. Okay, thank you. Next slide. Partnerships. As uh, Mirjana was talking about, um, we are uh, a, or UNDP is a member of the uh, SPHAS, Sustainable Procurement in the Health Sector, that initiative. And actually, it's hosted in our uh, Istanbul Regional Hub. And um, we are uh, we are we are thinking about similar initiatives like the SPHS and um, that could be for instance in the renewable energy sector where you could develop uh, um, good tools and 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 so on for uh, for, for that uh, sector and one uh, one one project that uh, uh, I'm currently involved in very much and uh, and our team here in New York is uh, is a partnership with uh, Tesla where we're in um, in in discussions with them to roll out uh, or pilot their new energy storage systems. This has been going on for a couple of months so far, and we have uh, some great uh, interest from our from our part, uh, from our country offices in uh, in uh, Senegal and in Zambia, and we're talking about piloting uh, these in, in in countries where they're needed. Um, thank you. Next slide. So, benchmarking, that will be another key feature. We can talk about benchmarking internally, externally. Uh, there's, al there's always need 
to benchmark in order to analyze and to review what's going on and whether we as well as our peers as well as our uh, stakeholders or other stakeholders are doing um, what we're expected to but um, it's the main the main issue here is of course that it aims to drive business improvement and ensure that CSR um, is respected by subcontractors that is that is what that is one key feature of of benchmarking and uh, this is where the green procurement index health is uh, is is driving key is driving the key initiative and um, similar to what we just said on the last slide and um, is that health products or the will be used as a pilot to see whether we can roll this out in other product categories or the concept rather and see how it can be adopted to um, any specific circumstances essentially we see benchmarking then as providing this objective measurement of sustainability um, and um, it serves as the first step in a broader commitment thank you next slide and then we have uh, measuring impact essentially we will have to do of course measurement on several levels but um, if we're talking about health sectors and uh, and uh, and uh, and renewable energy sector we're talking about that we have to do our homework and uh, review the uh, ongoing certifications and uh, certification schemes and standards in environmental management systems and uh, for instance the self-reporting schemes on greenhouse gas emissions uh, the carbon disclosure project and in order to ensure how these can be um, applied in our specific context Another key feature is, of course, to report back our findings to, and we will be doing that to via the annual statistical report, the UN annual statistical report, I should say. Thank you. Next slide. Yeah, that's about it. I hope. Um, think it was interesting and please uh, get in touch with us in the team I see my my uh, uh, neither uh, mine or uh, mr. Volker Welter's email are there on the slide but uh, I'm sure if you get in touch with the organizers that they can, they would be happy to uh, hand them out or our contacts out so thank you very much I hand it over to the to the organizers Thank you very much. Yes, we will be sending a follow-up email and we will provide the, all the contact details. So now let's move on to the third presentation, although I don't see Morton connected. Emily, could you please check with Morton, who is going to cover? Okay, Morton. Okay, I will unmute you. Can you please speak up? Yes, I'm here. Perfect, we can hear you. Welcome. Okay, I hope everybody... Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. Can and uh, yes, my name is uh, Morton. Uh, my name is uh, Morton from UNFPA, and I'm going to uh, give a presentation on some of the initiatives that UNFPA have been doing over the past few years. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to the organizers and to my previous uh, speakers. It was most interesting uh, to hear all the initiatives. Uh, next slide, please. So, my presentation is basically going to cover mainly uh, some of the more sort of uh, practical uh, 
uh, initiatives that UNFPA have been doing. Whereas we heard from the previous presentations, very interesting uh, presentation on how, uh, from an overall point of view, and the very high level organizations are working together. Then I will give examples of how uh, UNFPA have been uh, working with uh, our manufacturers uh, on a few concrete examples. Before doing so, let's just remind ourselves uh, some of the uh, reasons that we are doing all this uh, work. Obviously, first of all, to help the environment and to create win-win uh, situations for manufacturers and for procurement uh, agencies, uh, but also to live up to Ban Ki-moon's uh, good statement back in 2007 and to work towards a climate-friendly and environmentally sustainable uh, UN. And one of the initiatives is, of course, the SPHS, which you heard earlier on today, where UNFPA is also a member. Next slide, please. So the two years ago, in 2013, we implemented the Green Procurement uh, Strategy for UNFPA. And essentially, it's a collaboration model where we have engaged uh, industry uh, other organizations, NGOs, suppliers, donors, uh, etc. And the, without going too much into details, essentially we have a wheel whereby we work at uh, different levels, but starting up by informing our uh, suppliers on what we plan to do, and then we work closely with them and then we implement our strategies directly and we will eventually uh, monitor uh, what uh, we do, do the kind of work. So next slide, please. These are the areas that we uh, selected to start with. And the reason that you see these focus areas is that although there's, of course, many, many other areas that are extremely important, it is important that you focus on certain areas where you can make a real impact and particularly working with our top uh, manufacturers in terms of procurement volume we selected areas where we felt we could make uh, real improvements. So you'll see the green lines are uh, basic improvement areas so for example CO2 emissions, it's water, it's chemicals and it's raw material usage and then you see the actions that's the columns where we for example say that uh, related to energy consumptions, the factories can do a, a number of actions and that will resolve in CO2 uh, emission uh, reduction. And similar you see for other things, for example, uh, water management, you can also see that there are areas where the manufacturers can work. I will not go into all of them, but just to say that these are the areas that we have selected to work with the, in the beginning and where we have communicated with our manufacturers that we will start. Next slide, please. So we have started with what we call low-hanging fruit, so basically areas where we could make concrete uh, initiatives that would help both manufacturers but also help us uh, making uh, greener procurement and relatively quick uh, demonstrate some uh, benefits for everybody. Next slide, please. And I'm going to talk with uh, about some of the initiatives that we have done. Uh, first of all, uh, and these initiatives are relatively uh, low-hanging fruits. We have introduced in our tenders uh, that uh, manufacturers must be ISO 14001 uh, certified uh, beginning from uh, next year. But obviously before doing that, as I said, we started two years ago informing them about it, that we were going to do it. We informed them about the benefits of it. We were working within uh, ISO organizations, uh, etc. So it's a gradual process whereby manufacturers will learn about the benefits of being a ISO 14001. And then gradually they have time to, to do it. And then eventually we are going to, of course, monitor it during the pre-qualification scheme. Uh, but for now, we have put it into the tender documents, and the first tender where it will be a requirement is our upcoming uh, condom tender. Uh, UNFPA is together with USAID the biggest uh, public sector procurers in the world of condoms, so therefore we believe we can make a real significant impact in this area. Other areas we 
we have asked the manufacturers to look at is to have a clear wastewater treatment plants. Uh, it is to look at the air pollution and it is to look at plans for saving energy and using renewable energy as much as possible. Here we have asked them to go by uh, local uh, laws and one can argue that that is a small step but uh, it is important that we uh, also respect the manufacturers and we give them a, a real chance to uh, upgrade their manufacturing facilities. If we are too fast and if we push them too much we will risk uh, losing uh, a lot of manufacturers, maybe all of them because they cannot make money or they don't have enough time to change their production. So it is important to be re reasonable but also to communicate what you want to do. And finally packaging and this is another area where we have made great progress uh, by introducing uh, various packaging requirements, for example using recycling material. I'm going to talk about that a little later. Next slide please. So these are some of the areas that one can focus on uh, within uh, both manufacturing but also uh, what what kind of green impact the product uh, will have. And once again, we have uh, focused mainly on the manufacturing side and the usage of uh, raw material, but uh, gradually we are going to also deal with uh, packaging and transport and consumer utilization and eventually also at the waste and the disposal of the final product. But to start and to be realistic, especially given we have very little budget available, we have started within uh, the manufacturing sites itself. Next slide, please. And this is the plan that we follow. So uh, essentially, we always use the same model. So that means that we tell the suppliers up front that within the next one to two years, this is what we're going to do. We have various collaboration events, for example, laboratory training, we have factory trainings and, uh, of course, written material and other types of uh, material. And then we give them the requirements, that was the bidding documents I spoke about, and eventually they will, of course, have uh, audits, uh, and that is only going to happen after three to five years. And once again, that is to give them time to really fully implement these things, and so we're not seeing as being completely unreasonable to the manufacturing community. Next slide, please. And these are some of the recent uh, activities that we have started. Uh, I've already touched briefly upon them, but the uh, ISO 14001 is just that we are going to train our own staff, of course, so that we are not only asking manufacturers to be ISO 14001, but we are also planning to do it ourselves. And we are already uh, ISO 9001 certified. Uh, packaging is a big area. We participated in various ISO events and we are doing a lot of uh, work there. And we have quarterly uh, training and meetings with uh, 12 manufacturers that are currently volunteering to do some uh, work with us on this, uh, uh, on this uh, work. We have also done some research and we will be publishing various articles related to reducing the condom pack size, increasing the shelf life and other research to basically help um, the products to uh, live longer, so to speak, so you don't have to throw away so many products, but also if you can pack them more compact, then you can, of course, ship more product in this space and save energy and raw material. Next slide, please. This is uh, one of the publications we have made and you are free to download it from the website. It talks about the safe disposal and management of unused, unwanted contraception. And this is of course very specific to UNFPA's mandate, but uh, a lot of these principles can be used for other medical uh, products. And it's basically good guidance for governments and for uh, others. Next slide please. And this is some of the markings I was talking about. So in terms of the paper and the cardboard, we are now asking manufacturers to have FSC marking. This is not possible in all countries, and therefore we also have an, a few others equivalent uh, labeling that we will uh, accept 
uh, and we are using kind of a grandfather approach so that we can basically take and move them slowly over uh, to um, a, a new uh, system. So if the, the countries where the cardboard is produced, they do not have any of this, then we will ask them to uh, prove that there's more than 50% of recycled material in the cardboard and gradually we are going to increase that number. Next slide, please. And these are some of the upcoming activities. I've already mentioned the uh, ISO 14001. Uh, also, in terms of uh, ISO TC157, we are working on creating uh, eco-friendly production for condoms and standards related to that. So that's an initiative we have. The, we are, will do more studies and we'll be publishing more art articles related to packaging, insulation, and recycling. And we will continue to work even more on the FSC marking. And then we have a number of uh, key events, and Mayana already mentioned the UN supplier meeting, 25th to 26th of November in uh, Copenhagen. Next slide, please. And I would like to thank you, uh, and you're most welcome to contact us in Copenhagen if you have more questions, and uh, we'll also answer questions afterwards. So thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. I think we can move on to the questions and answers session. Yes, maybe so you can give the floor to the person first. The person has Try left. To, um, the person left, we, we move to the next one. Mm. It's from Kezan Kezan. I'm yes. muted you. Can you hear us? Um, we can't hear you very well, so I'm going to just read your question. So the question is about acquisition cost versus total cost of ownership. How do we convince short-term political masters and complacent bureaucrats on the TCO benefits? Well, I think this one is quite uh, straightforward because the, the TCO is mainly a financial benefit, right? So Basically, we're just incorporating, integrating usage costs and uh, disposal costs in the analysis at the moment of the when we do the procurement. So uh, I think it's in the, in the advantage of uh, the, the the government, the procuring entity, to uh, use this method, which is not uh, actually is really a financial method because the the benefits uh, are going to uh, to be financial uh, because the, the expenses are real expenses that will be incur incurred during the, the period of possession of the good. So I don't think that there's an issue. There's an issue with the externalities, incorporating the externalities, because then the, the benefits don't accrue to the organization. When you're talking about benefits to society, the society gets benefits, not the procuring organization. So the issue is how uh, do we make sure that uh, polluters pay, basically that uh, when there is a, a cost to society, for example, uh, a, a pollution, it, be, it is transformed into, into a cost to the polluter so that it can be taken into account in, in the procurement process. So it's much more uh, difficult. We, we do it, for example, we start to, to do it in Europe for uh, carbon costs. So uh, now with the new public procurement directives, when uh, there's a, a purchase, uh, the, um, we, we were able to introduce in the tender document criteria related to the cost of carbon, to the impact of carbon in, in the purchasing. So uh, in this case, we can give a value to the carbon that can uh, shift the decision to a less polluting good compared to a more polluting one. And, uh, but it, you require really a good legislation to allow you to, to perform this kind of uh, uh, evaluation and, and the kind of procurement, and, and, and not, not many countries have this possibility. Thank you, Farid. Okay, let's move on to the next. Are the UN member countries always from uh, Kezang Kezang? The, questions, the question is, are the UN member countries obliged to implement the SDGs? In this case, those related to the health sector. This is the, the, the question of uh, 
the, uh, the mandatory character of the, the SDGs. Um, I think it's, uh, it will be its decision from the international community at, at a recent summit. Uh, there is no, I guess, uh, obligation, but it's, uh, the countries are really encouraged to uh, put all the efforts into uh, implementing and, and achieving the SDGs. We still have to define the indicators and it will be uh, reporting and there will be monitoring uh, done on all the, the targets and, and the objectives. So uh, I guess this is uh, an international commitment, but the, it is not, uh, I would say, uh, mandatory for the moment. A question from uh, Gamini Senanayake. Can you check, Irina, the person here? Yeah. So Gamini, the, can you try to ask the question online? You are unmuted. Hello. Hello, yes, we hear you. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay, so I think this is a question for uh, colleagues of UNDP. Uh, the question is, uh, Gamini is interested in learning more about the development of Tesla storage batteries and the pricing. Okay. So essentially, um, the uh, pricing of Tesla's batteries, uh, or I'll take it from the beginning, the battery that they sell or they manufacture and sell is the similar type of battery that anyone would find in their cell phone or smartphone. Um, it's a, it's an, uh, it's a, essentially a little bit different from a normal lead acid battery and it's also more environmentally friendly for that matter. But that's besides the fact that pricing is available or publicly available on their website. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the specific pricing because uh, it's not us setting the prices, so to speak. But it's available on their website, so I encourage anyone interested going there. Um, also concerning the development or manufacturing, that's how I read the question at least, uh, that it's concerning the manufacturing process and uh, potentially a little bit about the design process. But essentially the, the Tesla idea is to, of course they started with electric vehicles, now they're moving into energy storage systems on a larger scale for other applications and uh, especially for uh, solar panel systems or um, solar energy systems. And um, what they've done is that they've built or they are building a huge factory, essentially a factory that we will, when ready, be producing as many batteries of um, of the uh, of the kind that we're talking about as a whole world production currently. So it will essentially double the world production of um, batteries within this category. And, and that is a pretty big increase and that's also why, uh, at least if you read their statements, that, um, that their pricing is so competitive. And it is competitive, that, that, I, can, that I can informally confirm but um, that is a little bit about how they how they do it, and I, I'm not sure if I missed any uh, pieces of the questions that the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the, uh, the that 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 people are interested in knowing more about. But uh, I think that is sort of the main pieces as I see it. Thanks. Um, I have a hand raised by Elaine Blair. Can you please speak up? You are unmuted. Hi, good uh, morning and afternoon and evening, everyone. Um, I just had a question in regards to the actual um, clauses that you're putting within the tender documents for the health sector. 
as well as how they are being evaluated uh, once they return. Uh, are those still under development or they have been developed? For whom is the question? Um, it could. Well, I think UNFPA um, would probably be more yeah. um, in the position to answer that. I'm happy to do that. Uh, basically, in UNFPA, what we have that some of them are very uh, are relatively easy to monitor because we have pre-qualification scheme for suppliers, and that is a scheme whereby we basically go to the supplier and we visit them. And the first requirement we have done is, for example, do you have uh, ISO certificates? And therefore, we will see yes or no, they have uh, that ISO certificate. In terms of whether they have uh, wastewater treatment plants, again, we will see if they have a plan in place. And then uh, in the first round, it's basically a yes or no. Uh, so you can say, our measuring in the first round of bidding is kind of soft because it's only a yes and a no. But we have told manufacturers that gradually, of course, we'll be make it tougher, and therefore we will evaluate in the future and, for example, give them a percentage and say, you know, this factory is will get 80% because they're doing quite well, and another one they may be doing only 10% because they're doing a polling. But at the moment, it's just a yes or no. Thank you. Okay. I have a question from um, Marco Estoni. I guess to our uh, UN colleagues uh, doing procurement. And he's asking, in their conformity procurement process, are the EPDs, the Environmental Product Declarations, used as an instrument to verify the environmental criteria. So do, do you guys use uh, the EPDs in the procurement process? Did you hear the question? Uh, this is Miriana speaking. I would just like, I think it's, uh, it should be the best addressed by both uh, Morton and by Mark, since they also come from the procurement uh, side, but also from our side as the Secretariat of the Initiative, I know it has been uh, throughout discussed, the environmental uh, product declaration and whether it can be an instrument to verify the environmental criteria. However, we have realized that it has not been um, applied to the health sector to a substantive level that it can be introduced. Uh, as an instrument, um, but of course I, I leave it as well to both Morton and Mark to confirm and elaborate on that. Yeah, I can comment on that. Uh, from UNFPA side, we have not used it uh, to start with, but uh, as you rightly said, it's uh, basically, as, as we view it, something that is still uh, under development in the sense that it has to be uh, incorporated in our bidding documents. So once again, the approach we have taken is low-hanging fruit, something we can easily measure, and then we start off with that and see how it goes, see what kind of reaction we receive from manufacturers. And this is essentially a combination of us only having a small budget available, but also because we really want to make sure that we don't push our suppliers away from us. So therefore, we take this very careful approach to start with. If it is or not, uh, or, or. Morton? Yeah. Yeah. My question is, do you? I I, I had finished. So. Do you use EPDs in the? Okay. Go ahead. Do you use EPDs in the procurement process or not? That's the question. No, no, we don't. Not for the moment. Okay. Okay. We have another question from uh, Kesang. And he's asking any tested form of stakeholder engagement in SPP GPP, particularly to close the procurer supplier communication. A colleague from UNFP, Morton, maybe. 
because you mentioned a, a very good example of procure supplier communication. Uh, could, could you repeat? Uh, because you, you were breaking, so if you could just yeah. quickly repeat, please, the last sentence. He's asking about uh, stakeholder engagement in SPP GPP to close the procure supplier communication gap. And I think you provided a very good example of a dialogue with the market. Yes. The, what we have done there is essentially we uh, are doing it on a number of fronts. So we have 12 manufacturers that have volunteered to participate with us in a kind of a pilot. So we have quarterly uh, web conferences similar to this one uh, where we go through both a training aspect but also basically uh, brainstorming on new initiatives but also uh, they share their experience and best practices amongst themselves. Then we are very active in uh, ISO, as I mentioned, TC157, which is essentially a standard setting uh, organization and where you develop the standard for condoms and for IODs. And by working there, we automatically work with the, all the main uh, manufacturers, but also a lot of the really small manufacturers are represented there. So by having uh, open dialogue in these type of sessions, you can immediately reach out to uh, almost the entire uh, community of uh, manufacturers. Another question. Uh, Karin, if I may add. Oh, please, please, Mia. Um, yes, I would just like to add to this that, uh, as well as Morton mentioned, that UNFPA has been involved in numerous venues, engaging with suppliers and manufacturers, also some of our other members as well, and us as the SPH Secretariat. We have been participating in a number of these venues where we tried to understand and close the gap between the procurement and suppliers. And especially we consider communication as one of the most essential parts uh, of our collaboration and, and engagement. And this is one of the reasons why we understood um, in, uh, basically in a dialogue with suppliers and manufacturers that having something as an online engagement platform that could facilitate this whole process of communication and sort of the knowledge hub that I mentioned previously in my presentation presentation, which will be actually a perfect solution uh, for having a forum for sharing information and exchanging the lessons learned and also uh, bringing together basically both sides, the procurers and suppliers, and engaging them in, in further projects or offering regular updates of certain projects. So this is definitely something that we consider as essential and for this reason, as I said, we are in the development phase of uh, uh, launching, developing and uh, soon launching the online engagement platform where we would invite everyone to, to join and also uh, participate and engage. Thank you, Mariana. And I'm sure uh, Kazan will be happy with your uh, full responses. Next question is from uh, Margaret Enos. Unfortunately, she has left. We'll move to uh, another question from Omar Fernandez. San Francisco, and he's asking how can a provider manufacturer collaborate with SPHS initiatives? What about eco-friendly technologies for medical waste treatment, including pharmaceuticals and chemotherapy waste? I would say that uh, we have a number of suppliers and manufacturers who are interested to get engaged on the SPHS initiative, and I think it would be the best if someone would be particularly interested to engage in a certain project to write directly to us, to myself or in, uh, Dr. Christopher Hamelin, and we have provided our emails, and we'll be uh, delighted to uh, facilitate uh, basically a meeting with them and discuss how uh, we can find a way of uh, bringing together all the necessary stakeholders to address uh, any of the issues they would raise uh, or opportunities they would like to address. Um, so if it ranges everything from the waste management to resource depletion, uh, if we talk about energy efficiency or wastewater treatment, of course uh, we would be uh, we would like to discuss that. Um, and as I mentioned, again, I will refer to the platform where we will have a couple of different focus areas and they could get engaged directly with uh, all our stakeholders uh, from the network of experts uh, and, uh, and basically elaborate how much they could engage jointly in, in some of the projects. Mm -hmm. But for the first step, I would mention again that they can, of course, uh, send their emails to us and uh, we will follow up from there. Yeah. Well, I guess we're... Uh nearing the, the end of the, the webinar because we have no more questions. 
and uh, we only have a, a message from uh, Kezan Kezan uh, thanking us for and thanking UNEP and the resource persons for uh, their responses and the, the, the way they handle the questions. Um, maybe now uh, I will leave maybe the last word to uh, the presenters if you have something to add before we close. Mariana, we start with you. Yes, thank you very much. Again, I would like to thank you for the opportunity of presenting our initiative and I thank both Mark and Morton for uh, delivering their presentations. Uh, as mentioned before, um, I would like to invite everyone who would be interested to learn more about the initiative and get engaged to contact us through email and we'll be uh, delighted to share all the background information on the initiative and to engage uh, with the interested uh, individuals and institutions on our future products. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Mark? And I can just... Uh, Okay, sorry, it's Morton here. And I'll just follow up by saying thank you very much also to everybody for listening in. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know. But uh, equally important, if you have any bright ideas on how we can engage suppliers or concrete initiatives that we can do, research we can do, uh, giving or taking uh, into consideration that uh, all organizations have relatively small budget, but it would be great with ideas. So we love to hear your input. So thanks to everybody. Yes. And Mark? You want to say a word, Mark? Mark? We can't hear you. Okay, I think we have a difficulty getting Mark to speak. So I, I just want to would like to say that uh, for, even for us, uh, UNEP, it was quite interesting to find out about the initiatives from our uh, the, the, the sister agencies, especially that they are really connected to sustainable procurement, which is an area we've been working on for a number of years and uh, we really feel, uh, see a good opportunity of uh, linking up all these initiatives in the framework of the 10 YFP program. We have, we're conducting this global program and, and trying to reach out to um, all the SPP stakeholders and I think it's interesting to see that there are also sectoral initiatives that are trying also to, to build an international community of stakeholders around the, the health sector and we have very also specific uh, procurement initiatives in uh, more uh, targeted towards certain items conducted by UNFPA. So I think we have very good uh, opportunities and, 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 and I think we have very good uh, important reasons to collaborate and, and increase the synergies between our various activities and I hope that we'll be in touch in the future. I hope that uh, the participants in, enjoy the webinar. At one point we had 76 members who really we have a, a very good attendance from all over the, the, the world. And uh, so thank you again for your attention and we look forward to having you soon on, on, on the next webinar. Uh, please be aware that the, the webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Irina? Yes, thank you very much, Free. Thank you uh, to all the presenters and we will be sending the follow-up email shortly. Thank you very much.